Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the fifth episode of the Grimsby Town Road to Glory Career Mode with myself, Tibbin27. Now, we left the last episode with a good win over Newport County, 3 0 in the Checker Trade Trophy. Uh, and we left it on deadline day, end of August here. Now, I did say, well, actually, I don't think I included it, but I mentioned that I probably wouldn't make any signings. But I'm probably going to change my mind. I, I do feel as though we need a left winger. These are the five players that I have identified. Now I have, because it's the five day of the transfer window, I haven't scouted them. I have had a look on uh, Foothead and Sophie for, for ratings. They're a great place to look at ratings if you need to look at somebody quickly and know how good they are. I'm sure everybody knows about it. But these are the players that I've sort of identified. They're all... I can't remember all their ratings, but they were all 60 plus, as high as maybe 63, 64. But we're going to remove him, actually. I think we'll, we won't go for, for Nilsson Lawyer, the 21 year old. I'm not sure he's going to be quite good enough. Um, the other players, I don't know. It's it's difficult hosting a tour. Maybe we inquire about our Tealers and see how much they would want for him. I mean, that pace is great, and the contract isn't too bad. He'd probably want a little bit more coming over here to England. Uh, the Spaniard, but so we'll ask about that. I, I think Sean Cavanagh actually four grand a week is quite a lot. I think we are going to remove Sean Cavanagh as well. So we've got these two guys, and to be honest, I'm favouring Matt's cooler. They have said he is currently on the transfer list, and we wait any offer you may have. Okay, right. So we've got 940. That what are they saying? In my case, it offers me 190. Wow, that is cheap. Okay. Well, if they're thinking that cheap, let's let's go 150. If they're really that up, that not bothered about him, we'll we'll just offer in a really cheap offer and see what they say. If we can save money and get somebody cheap, that'd be great. Just to be safe, in case things don't go through in time with our tealers, we are going to put in a loan offer for Mats Kulert just for the year. Just take him on, and then he can go back to Hamburg and, and keep up his development. We won't put in a future fee, just the one year Mats Kulert, and it's unacceptable. I guess there's no harm upping the offer anyway, so if we say to 30, try not try and save a little bit of money. We'll say 230, we'll see, because I mean, we haven't heard from Hamburg yet as to whether they're going to allow us to, to have Kula online. I don't see why they would say no, but we still haven't heard from them. With four hours to go, we could miss out on everybody at this rate. Nine Golan's gone through, it's in the top deals to Man City. It's not in the latest deals, which is a bit weird. We'll keep going. And we've got a Marcelo to West Ham, Zardes from Galaxy to somebody. Uh, they've accepted that loan offer. Okay, so we, we've got that. We can accept that if we need to. I really don't think we're going to get this done in time with um, our dealers. They've got three hours. They'd have to accept now and then get in the... And then get it, yeah. We'll go one more hour. We've got to hear from them now, really, if it's going to get done. And we're not. This has been... A terrible deadline day. This shows that you need to get stuff done before deadline day. Because they're very slow to respond this year. So, right, where are we? The go no. Transfer negotiations. So, here we go. Confirmation needed. So we are going to make this our final signing of the summer transfer window. It's going to be Mats Kulertz from Hamburg. We believe, as long as the rating thing is fine on the... <laughs> on what I'm using, he should be 61 rated, so he'll that's that's pretty decent. He will obviously grow while he's with us, but he's only going to be with us for a year. Jose Artiles, who we, were, who we were looking at, perhaps now is going to be a pre-contract signing instead in the uh, in the January transfer window. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Matt's cooler, and we're going to have him for a year. Welcome to the club. Transfer deadline day has ended. 293 million spent across all the leagues. Obviously, big deals there. Coutinho, Gonalons, etc. going through. Which has um, contributed a lot to that uh, that big big price tag. A training injury. Dominic Vos is out for two months. Wow, okay. It's luckily we've got in um, cooler then, isn't it? We, we're going to have a look at um, the transfers before we get into that game against Blackpool. Transfer history is where it's at. Obviously, our deals, just a quick look at our deals, only one player left the club, and that was the first deal that we did. 20-year-old Reese Brown going to Barnet on loan. Not sure if he's playing or anything, I would doubt it. Only rated 48 rating, I think. 
Uh, Amari Bell was the first man to sign. 480000 we spent on him, the 22-year-old. Ted Smith then came in two days later uh, from Southend uh, for three hundred eighty grand. Uh, and then the other two have been loan deals. Joel Asaro has come in from Sunderland and already proved to be uh, a real star so far. And Mats Kulert has, uh, was the final man to come in towards the end of deadline day. The 18-year-old uh, will also be with us on loan for a year. Uh, all clubs. Uh, let's have a look at the big deals. No, that's not the big deals. The biggest, Albamiang has gone to Chelsea. 50.5 million uh, from Dortmund, the 27-year-old. Coutinho, 50 million to Bayern Munich. Uh, they have replaced him, in a sense, with Javier uh, Pastore uh, going to Liverpool. Obviously, losing Coutinho, that's a big loss. Uh, Nangolan has moved from Roma to Man City. It's got so many stars in that midfield. The other way, we can see f some of the players coming in, some of the free agents moving um, to some of the clubs in our in our league, I wish you could narrow it down to just League Two because I don't think it's really going to be worth going through. There's loads of loan deals. Carlisle have got two in on loan, one from Everton. Um, Browning, that's a decent signing for Oldham. Obviously, they're in the division above though. And then again, the lesser money is obviously being spent in League Two, uh, getting an idea of who's gone where. Don Cowan, he used to play for South End. Terrible striker. He's gone to Wickham. <laughs> Um, no doubt it was quarrel against me now. I've said that. Glendon to not uh, to Notts County. Um, Ports have made a signing there. Another sign for Carlisle. They made quite a few signings. Okay. All right. We'll we'll, we'll leave it there. We, we've got a good idea of the transfers that we've gone through anyway. Now I just wanted to give a sense of what's happened. Uh, but we'll probably just do the two games I think in this episode now because of transfer deadline day. It took a little bit longer than I expected really, but um, yeah. Just do the two games, so Blackpool at home and Portsmouth at home, two home games. So again, the team is very different from uh, what we saw before. We've got Ted Smith back in goal, Amari Bell, Dan Jones, Danny Collins and Ben Davis uh, making up that back four. Our new signing, Mats Kulert, or Collert, I'm going to go with Kulert, I like that, Kulert. Uh, he's on the left today. Uh, Sean McAllister back in that midfield role uh, with Chambers on the right uh, but the front three is the same. Uh, Brandon Comley, Omar Bogle and Joel Asaro are going to be out there looking for the goals. We're going to stick with this 4-5-1 attack because it works so well against Newport. Three goals scored. Really good performance. We just need to we need to produce those performances we're doing in the Cup in the league. And it's a great chance against Blackpool. So far, they've had three draws and one defeat from the first four games. So they're yet to win a game. They have scored a few goals. They've scored three, I think. Um, three or four goals. We've only scored one. We need to find our shooting boots in the league. This is the perfect chance to do it at home against Blackpool. Let's go. So here we are. We are back at Blundell Park for this League 2 encounter. It is Grimsby Town up against uh, relegated Blackpool. So before we get into the match against Blackpool, we have to announce both our Player of the Month and our goal of the month for August and as you can see there was only going to be one man that was going to win player of the month and that is our captain it is Mr Ben Davis he's been absolutely superb through August for us he is a great right back he's a great tackler a great captain he's um, you know good at getting forward as well and and trying to spur the team on and did very well throughout August. He is currently leading the way for the player of the season award and it's hard, it's not hard to see why with the way he played throughout that first month of the season. Of course there's a long way to go but it's been a great start for the captain and Ben Davis deservedly gets player of the month for August. Well done Ben Davis. The other award we are giving out today is the goal of the month. The best goal in August. We scored a grand total of seven goals throughout August. Quite a few of them came from Joel Asaro 
who's been brilliantly has been playing brilliantly while on loan from Sunderland, but he has missed out on goal of the month for August. It has gone to this man here. It's the big man. It is Bogle. Great month for him. Perhaps hasn't found his shooting boots completely yet, but Omar Bogle has won goal of the month for his strike against Doncaster away. Let's have a little look at it. Chambers into Summerfield. Can we get the ball into Bogle? Bogle, is he onside? He's onside, it's a goal! And Omar Bogle has scored! Oh, get in there! I told you it would take a bit of brilliance, and that chip ball was brilliant. Omar Bogle timed his run superbly, and Grimsby Town are taking the lead. It's our first goal in the league. Was it Craig Dizzy? I think it might have been the two subs combining. I think it's Craig Dizzy that set him up. It was a gorgeous ball. Bogle does very well and finishes superbly past Efridge in goal. Grimsby Town have the lead, and there's only 10 minutes left for us to survive. So there we go. What a great goal it was. Brilliant ball by Craig Disley to find Bogle, who took it down really well and finished superbly past the keeper. Deserving of goal of the month for sure. And that will now go towards goal of the season. So we'll put together the, what is it, 10 months, 9 months, whatever of the season. The goal for each month. And maybe throw in a wild card maybe. And uh, yeah, I will, um, I will either decide it on myself. Or maybe if the channel is growing enough we'll get to you on Twitter or on YouTube. Uh, maybe for out a poll uh, for you to vote for goal of the season. But goal of the month, I'll just be deciding myself with an independent panel. But it's Omar Bogle that gets it for the first month. Now let's get into the first game of this episode. Chris Sargenson is the referee. Quite young, looks quite young, doesn't he? Hopefully he's not going to be too uh, rash with his decisions. But here we go. It's Grimsby Town against Blackpool in League 2. And we're off. Not easy to get Ben, ben Davis found the wrong person then, and they're past us, and there's a shot, and it's wide of the target. Got on a bit too easily there, a slight mistake from Ben Davis trying to get the tackle in, and uh, Colin Daniels allowed pretty much a free strike at goal. It's wide of Ted Smith's post though, he knows that was a good chance to give Blackpool the lead here. On the ball, into Sean McAllister. There's a ball here in the middle to Brendan Comley, he was very impressive. In that 3-0 win, Bogle have a strike. Saved. Chance. Back post and a goal. That's the bit of luck we needed. And I think it's Sean McAllister. It is. Sean McAllister at the back post has tapped home 20 minutes in. It's pretty simple, really. It's, I think it might even be our first shot. Omar Bogle. A lot of power on the strike. And all the keeper could do was parry it. And Sean McAllister does well to stretch a foot out and get it into the back of that empty net. Gary Burrowdale very pleased with that. And it's a, is it a first goal at home? I think it is. We'd only scored one, and that was a white donker. So this is our first league home goal back in back in League Two. Brilliant stuff. Sean McAllister gets it. The engine in midfield. Grimsby lead. Right, hold up. Right, like, oh dear, no, Matt's cooler. Oh, he's just giving it away. I was just praising him. He's giving it away, and Andouille has found a man on the wing, and they've equalised. I mean, I was just saying we had to get off to a good start and get some confidence. We've done that, taken the lead, and now it's Mats Kulert's fault, to be honest. Nandrio's found his man well, and he's, there's no chance for Ted Smith in the goal, but unfortunately it's the man on his debut that is responsible for that. I'd literally just praised him, and then I made a mistake, and then he lost the ball, and then they've gone and scored from it. Who's got the goal? It is Mark uh, Yates. Is that the former Colchester guy? I think it could be. Okay, right. Not ideal. But Blackpool have equalised. Over to Mats Kula. We'll try again. He's actually done very well there, Mats Kula, to flick it on. Bogle wasn't there, though. And that's the half-time whistle. Uh, it's a feeling of same old, same old a bit. It's not 0-0 at half-time. It's one all at half-time. But I feel as though we should be doing better. There's the man on his debut who's unfortunately... He gifted Blackpool away back into this game with his mistake. McAllister had put us in front. It's Grimsby won Blackpool one half time. Back into Ben Davis. Ball over the top. I think we're... Oh no, it's onside. Lovely touch by Asaro. 
first past his man and scores. And Joel Asaro has done what he does best. He's just come into the game out of nowhere. Very quiet first half from him. But the 17-year-old, he just has something, doesn't he? He has that knack. It was a beautiful... I think it was Ben Davis that played the ball into him. Controlled it beautifully. And he just did the rest, didn't he? He does what Joel Asaro does best. And finishes beautifully past the keeper. Sam Slocum is not a bad goalkeeper. But that is a lovely finish. It's his first goal in the league. And Grimsby Town have regained their lead. Thanks to our lonely star in Joel Asaro. We, we've got to get a song for him. Because at the moment, he's looking as though he could be the star of this uh, of this first season. They weren't taking any risks. First substitution in the game. And it's uh, Mark, Michael Kane's coming on. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Can't believe it. Michael Kane. He's looking pretty good, isn't he, for his age? Michael Kane. On he comes. Well, let's hope he doesn't blow the doors off. It'll be a very good victory for us. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to make two subs here and we're going to change formation for the final 15 minutes. So Summerfield and Disley are on for Bogle and Brendan Connolly who's very tired. And we'll just have Asaro up top, up top to chase things down. Very well. Oh, I thought we had that. We've lost it. Bell, what are you done? No, one of you. One of you. There's about ten men have come across and they've scored. I can't believe it. I've literally just gone 4-1, four, 4-1 one, four, one, and they've bloody well equalised. Of course that would be my luck. Nandwier's got it. Shoddy for... Oh my god. I'm so annoyed right now. This is so basic. I mean, I don't know if that's Dan Jones or Danny Collins that's come out there, but there is no need for the two of them out there. No, that's Danny Collins. It's Dan Jones. It's the youngster. He's made a mistake. Two mistakes have cost us in this game. Yeah. No no wonder Gary's looking like that. He can't believe it. He thought we had our first home win of the season, but now we probably don't. Armand Andouille is equalised, completely against the run of play. It's finished here, and I couldn't be more annoyed. I, I haven't got any words. We've drawn two all at home to Blackpool in the most ridiculous fashion. No words for it. I've got no words for it. I'm not happy at all. Man of the match for this game is uh, going to go to Danny Collins. Uh, played very well at the back, uh, despite us conceding two goals. Uh, Sean McAllister will get second place. Uh, got our first goal, uh, and as usual, was uh, superb in the middle of the park. Uh, and Ben Davis will get uh, third spot. Nobody's getting past him down that wing. Uh, and a good display from him. So uh, Collins, McAllister and Davis. I'm so annoyed. I really am annoyed the way we let that go. We did well to get back in front. And then to, to, to throw it away essentially like we did. It's very frustrating. After that disappointing draw against Blackpool... We are going to stick with the same team. We're going to give them a chance to redeem themselves against top of the table Pompey. Yet to lose. Only conceded two goals. They're doing very well and we're not. It will be the, the final game of this episode. Uh, because of the transfer deadline day. It's Otherwise it's going to be too long if we play Stevenage as well. So what we'll do, we'll start off with Stevenage next time. Probably sim this game against Barnet. I don't like simming games, we'll probably sim that. Play Plymouth away and finish it on Accrington Stanley. That's what I think we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and get into this game. The big, the big team in League Two are coming to us. Not at a great time, but we're going to give it all we've got. It's Grimsby up against Portsmouth. So here we are, back at Blundell Park for the second time in a week. Obviously had three away games in a row and now two home games in a row for Grimsby. And this time the visitors are the former FA Cup winners, a Premier League team just, what, seven years ago? Maybe less than that. A big team here, the Fratton Park outfit, Portsmouth are here. Uh, now this is also Jack's team and I know Jack's watching the series so a shout out to Jack. I'm going to try my best to beat Portsmouth. Despite being your team. I think it's Kevin Johnson the man in the middle for this one. Come on boys. This is a big game. Let's produce our best. Porter going forward here. They're working around really nicely. 
It's going to be another game where we have little to no possession. Uh, a shot and a save. That, I don't really know how he got in ahead of Danny Collins there, but a good save from Ted Smith. First shot of the game, actually, I, I believe. Uh, is it no hunt? I think it might be. Not, not sure. <laughs> good save from Ted Smith. If it was, it's one ex South End man saving from another. Uh, they're going short. Interesting. Not many teams have done that so far, and it could actually work for them. Was that a save? I, I thought it had gone in for a second, so I stopped talking, but... Clark it is, and it's... Is he actually saved that? Apparently he saved that. Okay. Right, we don't want two men running to him. Sure. And, oh my god, they kept it in. Oh, well done, Ted Smith. He's going to have a lot to do today. Straight away into Brendan Comley. Back into Matt's cooler. Can he get a whip of a good ball in? He can. Bogle's there! And it's a goal! It's... What? Oh, Kulat's celebrating. What? Bogle headed it, didn't he? No? I don't know what's happened, but Grimsby Town are leading against Portsmouth completely against the run of play. Why is Matt's Kulat celebrating? Is it, it must be an own goal, then. The goalkeeper is unhappy. This is a terrible angle. Yes, it's an own goal. He has headed it into his own goal. Well, big pressure from, uh, from Bogle, um, but it's an own goal from Christian Burgess. Wow, terrible man bun as well. Um, and that's what you get for having a terrible man bun. Grimsby Town lead against Portsmouth. Completely, completely against the run of play. At the same time, they're still absolutely tearing apart. Oh, one man midfield. And I think we've got to correct that for the second half. Ball in. That's offside. No. Strike and a goal. Okay. Um, we're not going to win because we just can't defend at the moment. Really don't know what's wrong with us. I really don't know what is wrong with us. It's been coming, and Portsmouth completely deserve it. But defensively, we're just a shambles at the moment. I really don't understand what has happened to this team. In terms of shots, I mean, it's... These two sides reflected in the I thought that was offside. Of form, <sighs> it's a good strike. It's no hunt as well, isn't it? Of course it'd be no hunt. <sighs> Useless for South End, but ruthless for, for Portsmouth in that situation. Um, it looks absolutely nothing like no hunt, but it's his third goal already in the in League Two. <sighs> Portsmouth are back level. There goes the half time whistle, and um, yeah, it's one all at half time again. Um, very different to the Blackpool game. We would, I felt like we were a better team against Blackpool, uh, and shouldn't have been one at half time. This one we've been completely dominated by Portsmouth, um, but an own goal put us in front before No Hunt equalised superbly. Grimsby won, Portsmouth won. Because we've been completely torn apart through the middle, I am going to change to a four four two. I was going to go four one four one and go very defensive. Not so much to pay out for a point, just but just because we're getting torn apart in the middle, and I felt like that was a way to counter it, but. We'll see how two go in the midfield with Conley and McAllister, so dropping back. But we'll keep the two strikes. I think it'd be harsh to take Asaro off or Bogle off. I feel as though they deserve a chance, to, uh, and maybe this could work. There's a ball back in, though. Chambers! Oh, struck straight at the keeper. That's a good chance as well. We really haven't tested the keeper enough. We haven't really got forward enough so far, to be honest. But Ashley Chambers strikes it straight at him. Ball in, Bogle under it, and Bogle scores! Omar Bogle! Oh, yes! It was a perfect corner, perfect delivery. Oh, brilliant stuff. Bogle! That's my new celebration for him. That's a terrific header. Unstoppable. Get in there. The change in formation has worked. Absolutely worked. We forced a corner out of it, and Bogle has poof, absolutely hammered it into that corner of his head. Get in there. Second in the league for him this season. And Grimsby lead again against Pompey. Come on, boys. Just about does what he needs to, and Asaro here could be away. He's skipping through men. Oh my god, brilliant reverse ball. Joel Asaro has scored. It's 3 1. Portsmouth could be falling to their first defeat, and it's Joel Lasaro with it. 
absolutely terrific. Bogle, a visionary. <laughs> Look at this ball. That is a superb ball from Omar Bogle. And Joel Asaro, he's brilliant at one-on-ones. I thought he'd missed it for a second. The keeper, it's gone through his legs. I, I wondered how he hadn't saved it, but it's not his best finish, Joel Asaro. But he may well have given us three points against the league leaders. Unbelievable. Great stuff. 17, year olds and 17 years old and so much composure. He's his second in the league. It's his second in, uh, in two games. Absolutely brilliant. Grimsby 3, Portsmouth 1. Into McAllister. Space on the wing. They're going attacking. They're going for this. Oh, Chambers nearly poked it through. Oh, don't tell me he's injured. We could do without losing Ashley Chambers. No, he's okay. He's up. Okay. Oh, no, they've stopped it. No, he's injured. Oh. Okay. Luckily, Bollerin was on the bench, but that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, okay, they're spreading out here. Maybe we shouldn't talk too soon. Ender Stevens, ball in, and they've... Oh, they've missed it. I thought that was certainly going to be a goal. Smith has missed it. Wow, how has he not beaten Ted Smith there? <laughs> he pushed uh, whoever that was to the ground afterwards as well. Portsmouth definitely should have had a goal there, and that would have put a bit of pressure on us in the last minute, but they've missed it, and we're going to see this through. Is that going to be full time? No. Yes, it is. That is the full time whistle, and Grimsby Town have their first home win of the season, and they have beaten the undefeated Pompey by three goals to one. Brilliant victory for Grimsby Town. The Mariner faithful will be absolutely delighted with that. Really hard work. Portsmouth were superb and had so many chances. Ted Smith, brilliant in goal. He may well have to get man of the match. It's a great victory. It is finished. Grimsby Town 3, Portsmouth 1. Man of the match for this win over Portsmouth. It's going to go to Omar Bogle. No, new celebration. <laughs> Omar Bogle will get man of the match. 9 out of 10. A goal, an assist. Some all-round great play. It is fair to give him man the match. I will give second place, though, to Ted Smith. I thought he was superb. Yeah, he only made six saves, according to FIFA, but he had he had a lot to deal with, I felt, today. Um, some crosses to catch as well. I thought it was the best game we've seen from him. The first time he's really sort of been tested, I'd say. I mean, he didn't stand a chance against Blackpool in their two goals. So Ted Smith, I think, will get second for this one. And... Third spot, this is difficult third spot, but I'm going to go with Joel Asaro for this one. Again, he got a goal, um, yeah, he didn't get an assist, but he got he got his goal, he took that really nicely. Uh, and just general play, even when he's out on the wing, I thought he actually did quite well on the wing. So I've got to give him credit, he's quite a versatile player. And despite being quite quiet in the first half, he came to life in the second and him and Bogle really turned things around. So, the top three. Omar Bogle gets man the match for this one. Ted Smith second and Joel Lasaro third. Well done to those boys. Great way to finish with that 3-1 win against Portsmouth. Gary Burrowdale and his men uh, will be back again. Hoping to keep climbing that table and push on towards the playoff places. We are going to say goodbye there though for now. Do drop, uh, do uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, if you haven't already. Um, you can follow me also on Twitch where I do live stream uh, FIFA 17. I live stream GTA, Rocket League, the other games I've got basically. Um, do come follow me on on Twitch and join in with the live streams. That'd be great. Uh, Twitter at Tibbet 27 is what you need to follow. Uh, you'll be first to see when the episodes are coming out, any live stream and stuff like that. So do follow me on there. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be it for this fifth episode of the Grimsby Town Road to Glory career mode. Be sure to join me next time as we continue our push up the League 2 table. But for now, it is Tibbin27 out. <laughs>